So, in the last episode, we uh, got the machine hooked up, the Mega Touch Ion through the network, and connected through Windows. I don't know how I'm connecting to Windows. I don't really actually do anything in Windows except for um, edit videos. So, uh, let's let's go to Linux. So I have my Linux machine up here. Um, you're running Ubuntu 1604. It doesn't matter what you run. Um, so let's test to make sure we can SSH into that machine. So SSH minus L root 192, or we can do it like this, uh, root at 192.168.1.190. And you notice we get that error that we got in the um, when we did it with Windows. So to do that, we're just going to do create a file called .config. So we're going to um, cd our SSH directory. And then we're going to create a file.config. And we are just going to put, we're just going to do, in that file, we're going to do host star tab and then host key algorithms plus SSH DSS. Save that file. And now we should be able to do that SSH. So I'm just going to type SSH brute at 192.168.1.190. Ask me for my password. I'm in. Um, one of the things I want to do now is I'm going to cur um, ch uh, change the password for the max user. To do that, I have to do a couple things. First, I'm going to do mount minus O for options. Read, write, remount. Space slash. And then I'm going to type P-A-S-S-W-D max. And then I'm going to set the password for max to abc123. Okay. And why I did that mount minus o rw? That's telling right now the file system is mounted in read only mode, which is smart for a device like you know that you can't control and it's turned on and off all the time. Um, but you can't make changes. So by doing mount minus o rw, comma remount space slash, I'm telling the root file system to be remounted read write. And then, once I do that, I can change the password for Max. If I try to change it without doing this, uh, it wouldn't let me. It would fail. It would, it would try to do it, and then it would fail, because it couldn't write to the, the, um, where the passwords are stored. Okay, so good. Logging out. And now I'm going to log in as Max. Uh, so SSH Max at 192.168.1.190. And I'm just going to make my screen real big here. Oh, I hate this when you bunch this stupid theme. It's like impossible to I change the theme here. There, to grab and make bigger. All right. Password ABC123. And there's a couple files that I want to look at. Um, when a Unix, well, when an older Unix system, like uh, CentOS 5 system boots up, what the system does is it reads this file Etsy init tab and it tells it how to boot. Now normally as we, we did in, in the first episode we changed that from 5 to 3. Um, what's going to happen is normally on run level 5 which is the, 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 the run level that all the graphics are come up with and the system usually boots in it's going to run this program called Etsy LX, X11 pre-FDM and what's going to happen is the max user in their home directory is a file called xinitrc and if we look at that what it's doing is it's doing a bunch of startup and it's going to start the game um, so it reads it and it does some stuff to um, create some log files or some uh, pop some data in log files uh, reads in some um, other code basically sets the background to r black does this hardware detect script determines whether it's a widescreen or not 
Okay. And then basically here's the start binary, user local bin start. Um, it's going to see if there's this file, var, var merit um, delta and user local bin delta. If there is, it's actually going to change the start file to user local bin delta. If it's not, we're going to still use the start. Um, we're going to use this file. Um, user local bin start. Actually, if, if, if this file exists and these files um, do not, then it's going to use this var bin start. But then, basically, it's starting at uh, Firefox. I don't know why it's starting at Firefox, but it's weird. But then it's going to start the, the binary that it shows with the option name, merit start, video mode F. I don't know what any of that means. It doesn't really matter. Um, at some point we might figure out what that means um, as we reverse, who knows. But um, So we have it there, that's how it starts up. And again, I, I mentioned that we want that file, that start file, so we're going to pull it back here. I'm going to make a directory called um, ion2014 CDI on 2014. And then I'm going to grab that file again. Remember, it's SCP um, root at 192.168.1.190. User local bin start. And let's we'll call it start here. Okay, and now that file's there. And we can start looking at this file. So we pulled back the file, and that's great. Um, there's one other thing I want to do. Um, I had closed down the other windows, but let's let's SSH back into that machine. And there's a file .xinitrc that we mentioned. And when I was going through that, I noticed that it, it ran this um, network manager start. Um, it, it's a the network manager. It's the automated network manager. Well, I think it says Merit Network Manager. I'm assuming it's just the normal CentOS Network Manager. But um, this will, if this gets run, it's going to screw up our network settings. So we're going to comment that out by just putting a hash mark in front of it. And now what I want to do, oops, I got to change my, I got to re SSH. I'm going to do SSH minus capital X max at 192.168.1.190. ABC123. I just want to see if, um, I can actually get this thing um, to start remotely. So I'm going to run a file called or a program called StartX, which should actually read in that X in an RC and do everything it says to do. So let's see what happens here. That's not doing anything. Well, let's see if it is. It's not what I'm expecting. Okay, so it actually is started up. Um, let's close that down. And instead of doing that, we don't have an X server running. I'm going to try this. I'm going to run the user local bin start name merit minus start with no options. Okay, and we see what what, what, it, what normally would happen on the the ion uh, machine screen, and we get a touch screen error. Hmm. Ideally, I don't know if we'll be able to do this easily enough. Ideally, I'd like to actually be able to start the game and show it on my computer here. Um, because that would be ideal. Because then I could really do a lot of remote work. 
I don't know if that's going to work or not. We'll find out. I need to get the touch screen. I need to get it using this display, but using that touch screen. That's going to be. I got to think about how to do that. So I thought about that error, and I think I know what we're going to do. We're going to. Um, I've I logged out, so we're going to SSH back into that machine as Max. And we're going to edit that xinitrc file. And what I want to do here is we're going to comment out the line that starts the game, which is over, is over here, the line that says right under run the game. And then we're just going to type the word xterm, which will bring up a terminal and then stop everything. Save it. And then let's do init 5. And what should be happening right now is the system should actually be starting up. And if we look at it, it should be a, a screen that has a terminal on it. So yeah, that's what we have. Your screen should look like this on your actual ter your screen. And if all that, if it looks like that, we should be able to do the next line, which is we're just going to type the word user local bin start x. Oops. What? Oh, I'm not start x, just user local bin start. And if everything goes well, we should actually see the game start here. It looks like it's doing it. Definitely doing it. Awesome. So this is great because now we actually can um, I'm gonna move that over there. We can actually see what's happening on the screen while we're sitting at our remote computer, which is going to make life easier easier for us to debug things because we're going to have to do um, do a bunch of testing, starting things on and off. And I want to be able to record and just type easily. And you can do the same and cut and paste the commands when we get there. But you can see it's actually starting. It's actually playing the game remotely, which is kind of cool, right? You can see I'm actually controlling it with my mouse, um, which is really cool. It's slow as heck, but that doesn't matter. Uh, we got what we need. So, awesome. Uh, so, now, I think in the next episode, we will, we'll actually start trying to get the game to work without the key. I think we're all set up now, everything we have. We might have to add some software to this. In fact, we're, we're certainly going to add some software to this. I'm going to hit Control-C. Should kill the game. Should kill the game. All right, not killing the game. We'll close the window here. There. Um, I just want to see if GDB is on the system. It's not on the system. I'm just going to run com some commands to see if it's actually on. Already, I don't think it is. No, it's not. So we'll have to add GDB. But I think we're ready to actually start hacking away. Um, we already kind of hacked away a little bit. We've, we've um, got the machine doing what we want, remotely uh, accessing it and actually playing it from a remote computer, which is pretty cool. Um, so in the next episode, we theoretically will start trying to bypass that key. And this is, I mean, it's going to take a bunch of episodes to do this, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to try to keep them 10 to 15 minutes an episode. I don't know how many episodes it's going to take. So join me next time. Thanks.